let's kick it off. Okay, website wow. Uh, of all the things that I think cause people, no, that's not true. I was going to say it causes people mo most grief, but I don't think that's true. I think there's more things out there at the moment that are causing significant grief. But when it comes to marketing, websites are one of those things that people kind of, they start down the route of and they want one and they know they need one. And for some reason, well, for a whole bunch of reasons we're going to explain right now, uh, that they kind of end up being one of those things that, that takes a long, lot longer than you expect to do. Jeffrey, just head over to the chat box, mate, but uh, that's perfect. You're in the Q&A, but that's great. So let's, by the way, as I said, you have control of your audio. So jump in, ask questions, share, because I know a lot of you have had experience with websites. And I think these things are best done if you share you know, what works for you, what you've learned, the mistakes you've made and all the rest of it. Uh, just want to let you know, stick around to the end. Jen and I have been playing with some ideas around how we can better support you and uh, you know, your businesses. I want to share with you an idea I've had around a done for you service that may be interesting. As I said, it's, it's an idea, it's something we're looking into, but I'm, I'd like to share it with you and see if there's validity or see if it works. Is that cool? Perfect. So let me share with you sort of what, what I'm getting at here or the big idea. And to do that, I have to go back to sort of 2013. Uh, in 2013, I've spoken about it quite a bit. One of the sort of the turning points in what I did was when I, I got involved in a tech startup incubator called Corporate to Freedom. I've spoken about it before. Um, and the guys who were running it were really deep in the tech world, uh, very optimistic, you know, very abundance driven. And I came in and as a managing partner, I said, yeah, come on in and help us out. And one of the first things I wanted to do is have a look at the numbers, have a look at the finances. And... One of the first things I noticed when I came in is they were getting a website built by a, uh, a third party company, like a, a marketing agency. And when I looked at the bill for that website, the, the price they were, they were charging the company was $36,000. Now, I knew, this, I knew the finances behind the startup. and I knew that $36,000 was not only a crazy price for a website, it was also a significant portion of their total budget. So I did a bit of digging uh, try to find out who the company were and equally importantly, who the person who was designing uh, this, this $36,000, you know, Leonardo da Vinci of websites. And you won't believe it. When I looked into it, what I found out uh, was that the person who was designing it until six months ago had actually been an industrial design student. In other words, zero website experience. Um, so I just jumped straight in there, talked about the contract, got hit with the whole, yeah, but you've signed this and you've signed that. And the truth is, but I, we managed to get out of it. And the outcome was we built a website at a fraction of that. The point I'm trying to make here is that websites are at times, they're a bit like the Wild West. Uh, not so much now, they're getting easier and easier. But there was a time, you know, not that long ago, where getting a decent website was, was like, you know, it was like diving into the dark web at times. And I want to sort of, uh, sort of attack that idea because there's two parts to this. There's the part where you have to create the technical stuff, you know, build the site. And I'm not, I don't want to disparage anybody who builds websites. I think there's a fundamental difference between something that is clunky, slow, and ugly, and something that is fast, beautiful, and intuitive. But uh, the technical side of things has increasingly become commoditized. You can get a bit of website built relatively cheaply. The second part to this, though, and I reckon the key part for most, in most cases, is the, is the content. Because I don't know if any of you have had this experience, please share if you have, where you you know, you line up someone to build your website, they're a technical person and, and, and suddenly they're ready to go, you're ready to go and they hit you with this list of everything they need. I need your value prop, I need your testimonials, I need your images. And invariably that's the thing that slows it down. So what I want to attack today is kind of a flow and a structure where if, you, if you're going to rebuild a site or you're going to get add to it, that just, just ticking these boxes and knowing exactly what you're going to put into it is going to firstly fast track the journey to getting it built. It's possibly going to make it cheaper for you, well, it will make it cheaper for you. But also, it's going to mean that instead of a website taking you know, weeks or months to get up, potentially, if you've got all this stuff planned and prepped in advance, uh, it's going to fast track the whole journey, if that makes sense. There's a couple of other ideas I want to get across, which I think are key. Um, often, you look at websites, you go into people's websites, and they're beautiful, you know, great looking websites. But for me, unless you're a design company, or unless you're a company that actually, you know, showcasing what you do is, is done through the beauty of your website. For me, the sole purpose of any website is not to convert a visitor into prospect or not to look good. Um, if you do convert a visitor into a prospect straight away, I'd probably suggest that it's less to do with the website 
and more to do with the visitor having already been through the process of deciding that, you know what, I need advice. Uh, you know, I found you amongst all the options out there. I've decided what I'm looking for and it happens to be what, you know, what, what you have, it's written in your copy and then I'm on. And the reality is this, this is actually going to account for a very small amount of the traffic that hits your site. Elizabeth, welcome back. Let me just allow you to talk and pop you in there. Uh, instead with this website or the website approach that I play, play the long game. You know, this is about inviting your visitor to take the next step, be that downloading something and joining your mailing list, getting a sense of what you do by the content you've got on there, or uh, because it's updated re regularly, or giving them a reason to want to know more. To do that though, and here's, again, the truth. This is all about your copy. Uh, some of the best sales pages are exactly that. They're just long form sales pages, but they're written, the dark art of long form sales pages. Um, I wrote an article, which is on the blog if you're interested, and it kind of talks about the truth about those two types of requests. You know that I get people come to me and say, do you know someone who can build me a website? And I've had like three recently. And uh, the request is, is, is two sided. It's either, do you know someone who can build me a technical website so I can give them the stuff, that's cheap and easy, or someone who wants the answer and who's gonna come in and develop your value proposition for you. And my experience has been great financial services copywriters are few and far between. I think there's probably, you know, if there's more than five, I'd be surprised in, in, in Australia. Uh, and primarily all great co copywriters, and I'm, I'm pointing to people like Joanna Weeb or, Weeb of um, Copy Hackers fame. You know, they're researchers first and foremost. That's what they do. Um, which means that they're, they're, if you engage someone to do that, what is going to happen is they're going to take time to uh, research your business, get to the heart of who your clients are, which make, that's what makes it expensive. And even then, there's no promises they're going to hit the market. I've seen a lot of people spend a fortune on marketing, myself included. I've, I've been down that route and realized that you, you're still dealing with somebody who fundamentally doesn't understand your business, the industry, the proposition, and a whole bunch more because the financial services proposition is not, it's not like selling widgets. So I want to put it out there that my opinion, like the $36,000 invoice, that's a charge for kind of not being able to identify what your selling point is. And I think at the core of success when it comes to online is, is understanding your, your value proposition as a rec prerequisite. I believe that if, if you've got a massive budget and you can find the right person, uh, then go for it. But if not, kind of this is a job for the person who knows the business best or can, or can get to the answer more, most quickly, and that's you. But we can make this easier by sticking to a formula. Now, that's a big, long, yep, no problem, Elizabeth. It's right here. Lovely. Now, that's a sort of an overview because I wanted to sort of position what, where I'm going to go with this. But do me a favor. I'd love to know from you. Either take yourself off mute and let me know or pop it in the box. What's your main thing you want to know about websites today? What's the reason that's brought you here today and the one thing I can, I can answer or give some insight into that's going to help you with whatever, the, you know, whatever your motivation is? Let me know. Either, as I said, feel free to tell me verbally if you'd like to. Just to, to knock yourself off mute and let's do it. Or alternatively, if you want to type in the box, you can do that too. Jen, what's your motivation for being here? Is everybody okay? With a few people that are sort of dropping off and dropping back in. Is that you or me? What should be on the first page, says Jeffrey. Beautiful, mate, because that is exactly what we're covering off today. Uh, the first page is, is, to be honest, the most important. Everything else... Uh, Pales in significance. Daniel, you're about to say something? Yeah, I'm keen to uh, get your take on all this, mate. Okay, that's easy. I've, I can definitely share a take. No problem with that. Carolyn says, we are getting clients from our site, but we have 1,900 leads and we want to get traction. Uh, okay, so this is kind of about, it sounds to me, Caroline, it's a bit like, what do you do when you get them come in and what's the next step? Is that right? I'd like to know, how, Jen would like to know how much the budget the majority spends on it. Perfect. Uh, I will cover that, Carolyn. If I don't, please, please pull me up and go, Stu, you said you'd let me know about this, that, and the other. And that kind of bleeds into something else, but we're going to cover off on, on, a, on a couple of periphery areas because ultimately, yeah, you can't talk about a website without talking about your first contact strategy and your warm-up strategy and your email automation stuff. So we'll go into that. Perfect. Anything else or is that sufficient to sort of give us enough material to just jump into? I feel like it's enough. But if not, let me know along the way. Cool. Um, let me just lay this out to start with because I think, you know, uh, one of the most important things to understand what, what not to do when it comes to website. And I think when we're talking about return on investment, and I think everybody wants to invest in a website and, and being able to measure or, or know they're going to get some results out of it to, to make your point. Here's the five biggest that I see. 
Uh, the number one is, is really simply that kind of, uh, you see a lot of websites and they're all about the business. They're almost like a brochure. Uh, and the problem is people on the internet have got very short attention spans. And really, if you're doing a good job of your website, when somebody hits it, you should be able to, they should see themselves. They should see a picture of people like them. They should see issues they, they, they relate to. They should see the problems that they have articulated better than they can articulate themselves. When you do that, it's almost like a, you want it to be a mirror to them, not a mirror to you. Uh, and that goes for everything from the styling, the fonting, the look and feel. Sometimes, I don't know if you've had the experience of hitting a website and it looks dated. It looks like, my God, it looks like, you know, Tony Robbins is branding from the 90s or some investment firm around about Wall Street time. Well, the reason for that, particularly if you're dealing with a smart operator, Kerwin Ray is a really good example of this, is because he knows that that is what his market perceives. That's what his market, his age group, whatever it is, perceive as success. So again, if you've got a website that feels like it's all about you and not enough about your client, then uh, that's probably an indication that, that you might be uh, missing the mark a bit. And I'll give you some examples. One example that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to is Fox and Hare's website because I think that's a good example to go to. And I'm, no doubt a few people are opening it in browsers, but yeah, stick with me. The second one is um, when you have a website that's just info, info, info. You want to tell them everything. It's page after page after page. It's blocks of text. It's, it's, it's all this stuff. And I think with websites, much like, to be honest, marketing or, or, or copy, the goal is to get the minimum amount of information in there as possible. And that's one of the benefits of having a visual medium where you can use video or imagery or stuff that just cuts down on the number of words and just gets the core of what you want to say, that's, that's kind of where you're at. So Jeffrey, you asked about page one. Page one has got to be, you've got to treat it like number one, the header has got to be so short, sharp that it wants them to read the next bit. And the next bit's got to be short, sharp and to the point. And as you go down the page, you're going to slowly get the right to give them more information. But at the top, you've got to keep it short and succinct, which is why the first page is the important bit. And the second pages, you can kind of um, you can kind of be a bit more long-winded and less focused on the pointy end and the sharpness of it. Um, Carolyn, this may be really relevant. Is I think I think the biggest the biggest mistake I see when it comes to websites is I go to someone's website and I scroll down and there's stuff about their proposition and there's no call to action that says here's what you could do, here's what you could do, or here's what you could do. And it, most importantly, it doesn't have a mechanism where I can capture the email address. Now, the subscribe to our list isn't gonna work here because um, right here and now, there's no shortage of emails coming to any people's inboxes, but lead magnets, which we'll touch on very quickly. If you have a lead magnet right there, front and center, you know, hey, are you somebody who is in my target market who's got this problem, was here's a shit thing that can solve that problem in five minutes or give you this or help this, give me your email address, we'll shoot it through your inbox. That to me is a, that's a, that's a must. And if you don't have that, right, Write that down straight away uh, because number one thing is, again, if we assume that most websites are not going to convert immediately, which is true, uh, website conversions are usually, if you're lucky, they're, I think the, the, industry, uh, the industry conversion rate of uh, website to client hovers around the 1% to 2%. Opt-in rates, I think, if you're, doing, if you're getting 20% opt-in rates, in other words, 20% of your visitors are opting in, joining your list, you're doing well. Um, traffic's a big one. Uh, how many people know how much traffic their website got last month? If you do, pop it in the box. If you don't, go, no, I don't know. If you know, uh, yes, Elizabeth knows. Uh, put the number if you can. I'd really love to know. Or don't if you don't feel like you'd like to, but love to know. Daniel knows. I don't know, but we can track it. 350 says Elizabeth. Beautiful. Okay. That's a big number. Again, because if you think about the website game, the sign up game, it is a numbers game. It's also a market game where the traffic comes from. But ultimately, uh, if your website's not getting the results you want and you don't know what the traffic, that's the first place. Before you rebuild anything, the first place is to look at it and go, am I actually getting any traffic? Because if you're not getting any traffic, it's kind of like you could have the most amazing restaurant in the world, but if it's out the back of nowhere and no, yeah, nobody knows about it, nobody's coming to it, uh, it's like this service station. You know, it's in the middle of nowhere, and eventually, guess what? It's uh, it's just not going to do its job of selling tra uh, petrol. And this is the other one. I think I, my experience and, and a lot of sort of experience of people online is, despite the digital medium, we want to connect with people. 
Uh, so when we jump on, when I jump on a website and there's no about us and there's no pictures and there's no who's behind it and there's no information about who the people are, I, I don't know about you, but I'm drawn away from it. I want to know that there's human beings in behind it that I can connect with, look them in the eye, look at their face, understand who they are and connect. So that's kind of a big thing. If you look at the stats around the, the after the homepage, the most visited page on a website is usually about us. So two things we know, have, have an about us and don't put all of this text at the top of it. Put the pictures of you and then do the other stuff at the bottom. In other words, you know, this is our team. And uh, don't call it anything apart from about us because that's what people know. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, let's dive in. I want to work through this with you. Um, we're going to focus on the doing here. But let's talk about the key components of, of, of the worksheet and, and the approach. The first piece that I think is really important is kind of your styling. Now, I may be preaching to the converted here because I reckon most people on this call have actually gone through the process, whether professionally or personally, and just done a bit of a branding exercise. In other words, they've got clear on a few things. Um, I might run through, rush through this, if, if, if it's, but I'll, I'll go through it. If you want to dive into any area, we can. This is our, uh, what we call the Adere box. We built it about, about three or four years ago. Once we started to realize that the brand we had or the, or the, the fonts and the look, we wanted to be consistent. It's available on the member site under uh, systems, brand identity blueprint as a template. But as you can see, it was about taking, uh, taking what we had decided about our brand, our color, our fonts, our logos, but also defining things around what kind of imagery do we want to use? In other words, there's certain, you notice there's certain pictures that I tend to gravitate towards. I like them and there's certain things I don't. You'll notice I very rarely use uh, non-photos or I very rarely use cartoons or animation or, you know, the animated stuff in any of our stuff because that's not how we do it. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of bright colors. There's a lot of close ins, if that's so to speak. So that's kind of letting people know that these are imagery. Talks a bit about our mission. Talks very much about how we write because I think um, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a passionate writer. I love writing. And I think the style of writing is, is very important if it's consistent. Actually, one of the best copywriters who uh, I met in Australia, who happens to be a friend of mine. She's, she, she's now in the UK, just had her first baby. Uh, she, um, she was one of the best copywriters and she had this ability to, to not just write well, but write in the style that was required of other people or, or the company she worked for. for. And that's kind of, that's what you want in a great copywriter. Uh, we define things like, you know, who we are. If, we, if, if the company was a person, what would they be like? Common words and phrases we use and repeat and also people who we admire. Uh, and that was really key for me being able to kind of make sure that whatever we we're doing, if I get someone come in and they want to build a landing page or they want to build a website, I will give them this and let them know this is the way we want to do it. So the, I think it's uh, one of the pages, I think it's page one in your notes. Now this is kind of taking the brand Bible uh, and just condensing it down. Uh, but the kind of things that I look for, and I might just jump in here. Let me know if you want to work through this or if you, if it's, again, I don't want to sort of labor on things that, you feel you've got, but I'll walk through each of the areas. I kind of break it down your brand into look, feel, what it's like, and the style. So the first thing off the bat is colors. Who has got colors scheme, a color scheme set for their business? They know exactly what it was. Woohoo, Picard, new, new episode. Pretty as everybody? Yeah, cool. So if I was giving this to a, to a third party, you know, I'd write down, right, we've got a blue, which is 17375A. Yes, I do know it. We've got our yellow, which the color code is A2, A2, 0, 0. That's our yellowy green, whatever you want to call it. And then, I, in other words, I would just give them that and go, once you're designing it, bang. You've got a style guide as well, Karen. Love it. Imagery. Again, style of pictures you like to see. Uh, you know, you might even go, you know what? I really like pictures of happy people, active people. You might even turn around and say the things I don't like. Uh, uh, oops, jumping there. You might turn around and say, let's have no, what's going on here? You might turn around and say, look, what I don't want is elderly couples on the beach. That's why I've used Frozen. Uh, I don't want stock photos. I don't want things that look like they might have been captured from people who have no idea who we are or what we're doing. Sorry, let me just reboot that, guys. I don't know what. Um, so uh, is it, just let me know while I reboot that. Has, has everybody got a, Daniel's got a lot of black and white of the coast. Looks good 
but not that flash for financial planning. Black and white, look, at least it's consistent. I'm not personally a fan of black and white, um, but it, it works really well. It gets across a sense of, you know, um, nostalgia, a uh, sense of permanency. Uh, there's, if you go online, you can also find there's a lot of information about what different uh, color schemes mean. You know, white means intelligence. Blue means, uh, I think white means pure. Blue means intelligence. Red means dangerous. Medical blue and clean, almost Apple style. Love it. Logos. Uh, if you've got logos, make sure they're PNG files, uh, which is a transparent file. Uh, I often ask people for files to, when we're designing stuff and they send me through JPEGs. PNG is where it's at. It's, that's a transparent one and most people will ask for that. And fonts. If you've got custom fonts, you know, for example, we use PT Sans, all standard text. And then we use Josephine. Josephine Sans, I think. What's going on here? Okay. Can everyone hear me now? I'm back, but not as the case. But can everyone hear me? Yeah. Wow, that was weird. Okay. So personality. Do me a favor in the chat box. And one word that describes the personality of your business as you see it. If they were a person, what would they be like? What would your person, what would your business be like if they were a person? Let me know. Inspirational, love it. So they'd be the kind of person who you just talk to them and you leave feeling, wow, I'm gonna go out and take on the world, love that. Yeah, in other words, that would tie in really nicely with the images. What else? Elizabeth, if your business was a person, who am I talking to? If your business was a person, what would it be like? Chatterbox, friendly, that wise friend you have, unreasonable friend, the one who makes you do stuff, enthusiastic. Yeah, I love that too. A lot of ours is about energy, you know? Our our business would be an energetic person that draws people in. Jeffrey, what about you? I'd really like to know, what would your business be like if it was a person? Experienced, like that. The wise, listening, experienced person. Lovely. Jeffrey, are you there, buddy? Maybe. Okay. Uh, I'll run through the, the response quickly. Things like uh, getting clear on what your clients are drawn to, the things they love. Uh, what skills and capabilities that you bring to, not just I'm a great financial planner, but what, what are the, out, the outliers? What are the things that you want for them? Freedom, insight, clarity. Uh, in terms of like, I'd say, whoops, that's a duplication, ignore that. Uh, metaphors. What do you do that's similar to, uh, what is your business similar to? My business is like a, it's like a Sherpa. We take people up and down the mountain. We're like, we're like bridge car financial planning. We're like the Tesla of advice. Uh, what do you see as your role in their, in their life? Uh, what can you see clearly that most clients can't? Wouldn't have a clue, perhaps stylish, classy, lovely, well-dressed, dapper gentleman, kingsman, maybe that's it. And then finally, style. If there's one phrase you use, pop them in there. Uh, if there's some common phrases, I know my internet connection is all over the place. Uh, common <laughs> I love that. Thou shall not pass this to risk profile area. You're going into a, an area of danger. Anyway, I'll stop talking. If there, are there, just out of interest, are there any phrases that you often use when you're talking to clients while I pick my pen off the floor? Are there any phrases that you typically tend to find yourself using a lot if you're talking about what you do or you're talking about capture them? Yeah, that could be your catchphrase. You can do it. You can do it. I love it, Elizabeth. Whether you can do it, people. If you, if you think you can, you can. Love it. 
Again, that's, that's stuff that you can play with on your website. Carolyn, is there anything that you say pretty regularly? Daniel, ditto. Capture that stuff. We set you up for the next thing you want to do. Perfect. Capture this because often, often it's the things that you say already. They're the best marketing that you can do. Who have we got in here? Uh, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey's in there. Beautiful. Oddly enough, uh, there we go. There we go. Yeehaw. Perfect. Capture this stuff. Capture it. Um, any particular words you use? Any quirks that make you unique? Uh, a friend of mine once said, I love this. He said, Stu, uh, the things that will eventually become your trademark are usually the things that will get you sacked at the beginning of your career. And it's true. Uh, eventually, you get to a point where you're like, you know what? I'm just going to do the things I want because I'm good enough to get away with them. Um, reactively create wealth, not manage it at the end. Love that too, Carolyn. That's awesome. And finally, models. Again, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the model thing, which I think most of you are, Model Advantage is a website, is a, is a, is a whole module on that which sits under experience. Uh, and I think if you use the Wealth Pyramid, use the Wealth Pyramid. If you've got your own thing, like Venn diagrams or ladders, use those. So look, I don't, hopefully that was useful, but I think going into this straight off the bat uh, with some sort of insight as to what your brand is, uh, is good. But most, many of you may already have that, but maybe there's some areas within that that uh, we've chatted about, which you know, spending a bit of time on the personality might be useful and it will enable you to craft a website and help, or help someone else craft a website for you that's a bit better. Okay, the, let's dive into the actual piece. So if you're building the website itself, and this is where we go through, by the way, there is a template in there called keyword research and I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. The first bit for me is the intro. And Jeffrey, to your point, that first part of the website, that first few uh, area, which is the top bit, this is the piece where ultimately the client's coming in and you have to assume that they just see a financial planning business or alternatively, you know, they know who you are, but there's nothing sort of that stands out. So we need to really pull out the best of what you do, not all of it, and put it out there. Um, this is the way I'd structure and we'll work through this together in a minute. Uh, obviously, you've got your bit at the top, which is your logo and your navigation. I think keep it really simple clear and logical. I think about us, services, the clients we work with, our blog and contact us. I can't think of any other sections in there unless perhaps you've got a portal and then you might have an extra one in a different color called member login. But that's pretty much all you need with your logo at the top. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you've got, if you've got other things in there, but I think that will pretty much cover everything and it makes sense to me intuitively. The top for me is this, we call it a, by the way, a lot of people call it the hero banner if you've heard that. And for me, this is, this is about a big heading. You're really, you're, the result you deliver, the big problem you solve or your shift in the world and other, or the most important client issue and the outcome and your point of difference. And we'll talk through that in a minute. Underneath it, you would usually have a tagline. So if your thing is, uh, where Carolyn's, Carolyn's wording was, uh, we, we create wealth, not just manage it. Uh, your subheading might be, uh, wealth designed for people who expect their advisor to do more than just uh, mind, uh, keep the money under the mattress or whatever that might be. So in other words, big heading, financial freedom, financial freedom for everyone. Uh, we help people who want it get what they want. Again, you can see how the big heading is the short bit and the subheading kind of talks to it. And then the equally importantly, the really key bit is here, choose your background imagery really well. If it's a video, uh, that's great too, that works. The one thing I'd, I'd kind of suggest, and this is an interesting discussion. I, I personally believe that up to a point in your business, you need to be very visual on your site. Now people go, but I'm building a business that's not about me. My view is at the beginning, the business is gonna be about you. And then at a later point, it's then gonna become about the brand. So some of you, I think, Carolyn, you would be at a point in your business where you need to push the brand front and center, although you're in the background. Some of the others might be in a position, Daniel, you'd be in that position. And this is not a, this is not a sort of better business or it's just a stage thing. Uh, Jeffrey, I think you and the team would be in a position where you need to be front and center on that. Uh, Elizabeth, absolutely 100%, you're front and center because ultimately at, at, that, at that early stage up to about, you know, you start adding your leadership team, the team kind of is, Oh, the business is you. It's kind of the, the, the Richard Branson thing. You know, Richard Branson and Virgin are in t absolutely linked as brands, but Richard Branson for a long time was Virgin, but now Richard Branson and Virgin operate in their own space. Virgin can hold their own. Does that make sense? And the next bit is a call to action. 
And usually what this is about, ignore the wording there, that's not right, which is uh, what you need is you need three points. Uh, sorry, let me start again. Your call to action. Remember I've spoken about the importance of having a lead magnet? Something that encourages people to download or join your list. This is where it lives. And I think having this as a second thing is key because there's some people who are going to come in there and if we accept the idea of your website is get, get, the, get the email, get the email, get the address onto your mailing list so you can start the process of, of playing the long game. This is where it lives. So in that space, typically you'd have, if you've got a magnet, the name of the magnet. So the time saver checklist, save up to 40 hours in your week. The, uh, the, what's the other one we had that was really successful? The productivity cheat sheet, five ways advisors can get more efficient. An image of it, and if you don't have an image of it, go to Fiverr and get someone to do a 3D image of your download, and then three to five bullet points. Have it as a slim thing, and then put it forward. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Let me know if it doesn't. This final bit here is really about just expanding on this bit up the top. And you would identify your three kind of things you help with. So if your thing is, we exist to help people save more money, invest more easily, protect what you love. You would go, there's an icon or an image. Impact is about most people out there don't save enough money because it's too hard. Uh, we help people to save 20% of their, their income by making it simple and not feel like discipline. And the result is you could be one of those people who re reaches the end of the year with a surplus of money that enables you to do amazing things in your life. Uh, problem is, uh, investing can be painful. Icon. Most people uh, invest poorly or either they get swayed by the things that don't matter. Our method is about complete transparency and helping people find investments that make sense for them. The result is investing where we take away the jargon, the nonsense, and just focus on getting you into a place where you can grow your assets. Does that make sense so far? Hopefully it does. Any questions so far? So I think if you nut those five, you know, three areas out, you've got your front page. You've got someone coming in. They can see your navigation. Good. Love it. They've got your big head. They know what you're all about. You're offering them the opportunity to shortcut it all, join your list, get your thing, in which case you can start playing the long game. And you're outlining kind of the three big value points that you can provide to clients. The second stage or the third stage in this, the second stage of the website or point three is once we've got people's attention, if they've read down this far, there's a good chance they are what we call below the fold. Now, if you're not familiar with below the fold, most of you will be. The below the fold is the point where you load a website. What's on your screen is above the fold. What's below your screen is, is essentially anything you have to scroll to read. And we have to make the assumption that most people aren't going to scroll down unless you give them the chance. So if your best stuff is down here at the bottom of the website, then you may never get the chance. But as soon as you got them, you can then jump into the second pitch with the elaboration. This is kind of how I like to do it. The first bit I like is social proof. I like a little bit of uh, three or four testimonials from clients, uh, image of the client if possible, uh, their name, and a really short outcome-based testimonial. Not a, not a, not a you know, three-paragraph thing, and not a thing that says, oh, they're really nice to deal with. Something that says, in the last five years working with WealthMed, I've seen my wealth skyrocket. Uh, WealthNet just overhauled everything and now I'm saving 20% of my income. Uh, I had no idea before I started dealing with Daniel. Right here and now, I've doubled my wealth in five years. That is kind of at the pointy end of the, the, the testimonial game. And by the way, if you don't have testimonials, I think there is one called, there is a module on the members site all about this. Let me just dig out the name. I think it's about how to get videos. Where is it? Testimonial testimonial video uh, is a whole structure of getting a client onto a Zoom video, just having a very quick 10 minute interview. And it'll give you not only a video if you want it, but it'll also give you sort of sound bites. Most clients are really happy to do it. By the way, has anyone done that? Has they got onto a, video, like onto a Zoom meeting and done a testimonial interview with their client? Anyone had a crack at it? No, Jeffrey. Okay. Yes, you have, Carolyn. Yes, says Elizabeth. Love it. And are, are they on your website? Sort of, says Elizabeth. 
which I'm not sure what that means, but uh, yes, but anonymously, which is, which is totally fine. Some people may prefer to do it anonymously, but and I, I always like to say, look, let's have a chat. If at the end of it, you are happy with it, we can, yeah, we can't use doctor's names. Of course you can. Do you remember the advert on TV where they had the guy, this man's a dentist. We can't show you his face. Do you remember that? I grew up my whole childhood thinking there was a law that, that prevented people from putting dentists on TV. Isn't that weird? Kids are strange. Anyway, um, the second bit is here is I know I said we'd have an about us page, which is good. But we want, a, we want a little bit of this here because if someone has to go to the About Us page to get to know you, uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's better to have it across two places. Essentially, usually this is a shortened version. Hi, my name's Stuart. Uh, I'm an advisor working with clients like this. Uh, the thing that I love working on or the thing that I'm best at is I'm, I'm very good at helping smart people uh, take control of things and get clear on what they need to do. Uh, hopefully, if you'd like to know more about me here or alternatively, if you've got a question, blah, 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 blah. And then maybe at the bottom, if you've got some social proof, if you've worked with companies, if you've been interviewed on, on TV, if you're endorsed, put that there. Or alternatively, yeah, just you could put a metric like 100, and, 100 clients helped. In other words, some sort of social proof. Does that make sense? The next step, I think this is key. And, and, and Carolyn, I think this will talk to your piece about what to do next. I think um, when I talk about the, having that next step, I always like to, on a website, have sort of three options for people. Now, yours might be different, but mine usually is, and I usually have these side by side. The first one is download our lead magnet. Image, title, what it'll give them. Download page, which then leads to a really simple landing page. In other words, if, if they're not ready to engage, uh, then you can give them that, that, that piece. I'll come back to you in a sec, Elizabeth. Um, the second thing is this is your middle piece. And by the way, always put your most important thing in the middle. This, if you want to book a session, don't call it a first appointment. Don't call it something really that, that appeals to them. So um, the general rule of thumb is, after Daniel, I think we've spoken about this. It is harder to sell free stuff than it is to sell paid stuff. Uh, so if you're selling a session, first appointment, a lot of people just go, hey, if you'd like to book a chat, click here. You've really got to sell it. Um, and the wording could be, would you like to book a scope your future session? This is a 60 minute online session where we'll scope out what you'd like to achieve from your financial future. We'll identify where you're starting from and together we'll identify three key strategies uh, that may be standing in your way or stopping you from achieving what you want. At the end of it, I'll give you uh, a, uh, a visual that'll help you understand the key elements in the process to get there. You with me? And again, you can just draw this stuff from the plan scope session. And what we're looking to book into is a first contact call here. In other words, they book the call, you have the chat, and away you go. Does that make sense? So the actual thing you're selling is the plan scope session. But the actual thing you're booking is the first contact call. Ka uh, Carolyn, does that, does that make sense? Do you want me to outline that or, or is that pretty clear? Assume it's clear. Let me know if it is. Great. Okay. And by the way, I would have that straight into Calendly. This would be into a landing page, uh, which would typically, if, and I'll talk about the automation, that would then talk to your email marketing tool, which would automatically send out your downloadable thing. And it would start a sequence. No problem, Carolyn. No problem at all. It would then start a sequence of emails. So typically, um, and I can touch on that a little bit at the end, but you would have the first email, hey, Carolyn, thanks for downloading our thing. Here's your downloadable lead magnet. Uh, have a read of it and let me know what you think. And then I would typically follow it up with one, two, maybe even three automated emails over the past next two weeks with the aim of starting a discussion or moving them towards contact. The other thing you can do on the landing page is when they hit this landing page, I'll, I'll just, I know my drawing around is terrible here. When they hit this landing page, you can have a page that says, thanks. Your thing is on the way. By the way, while you're here, why don't you just check out this video? And that video would essentially be, hey, Carolyn, or hey there, it's Stuart Bell here from Mount Area Coaching, or let me do it as if it's you, Carolyn. Hi there, it's Carolyn here from WealthMed. Thanks very much for downloading the tool. I've got it here in my hand. Uh, 
when you get it, my suggestion is just open it up, check out this. And I found that clients find it really useful if they implement this one tactic here, which is going to make a difference. Hey, while you're here, I wanted to share something special. Uh, as you know, if you join the website, I've been doing this a long, long time. Uh, and one of the things I love doing is working with, uh, particularly with clients who are at this stage or this stage or this stage. And the thing that I love to do with them is set them up with what we call a scope session. More importantly, we've got a great tool we use called My Prosperity. Now, because you're here, because you downloaded our tool, I want to offer, make an offer to you. If you are interested in getting control of your budget, having that one page view, I'm happy if we can have a quick chat on the phone. I will give you a, a subscription to My Prosperity. You can jump on, you can set things up, and I'll even take some time to jump in there and let you know where I think there's opportunities. Uh, if you'd like that, all you have to do is click the button below, which will send me an email and we'll reach out and set you up. But otherwise, thanks for downloading and I'll speak to you soon. Does that make sense? So what we're trying to do there all the way through is we're trying to go, they've downloaded the tool, which means there's a need. They're going to get the tool, which means we're playing the long game. But why don't we shoot a little video in here as well? So you can kind of maybe short circuit. And that's what this is all about. It's about playing the long game, but giving people the opportunity to short circuit it as well. So that's kind of a really easy way. The final thing is if they're, they're not interested in downloading, they don't want to book a meeting. I would just outline an upcoming event, which ties in really well, I think, with a couple of you who do events. Uh, Carolyn, I think you do them. Jeffrey, I think you, you should definitely look at doing boardroom events given your location. And you can just, the benefit of doing this, you can sometimes put events that you're thinking of running, uh, which I've done many, many times. And if you get traction, you run it. If you don't, you don't. Make sense? Hopefully that's useful. Uh, the final bit is if you've got a blog, and I think everybody should have a blog unless you don't produce blogs, in which case don't put it up there. There's nothing worse than having a blog that was last updated February 2018. And I think having a, a template in there where you can you know, outline your three most recent blog posts, or do you know what? If you don't have recent blog posts, just outline three of your best. And then finally, uh, obviously your contact details. Now, have your address. I think if you look at Fox and Hare's website, they do this really, really well. And if I get time at the end, I might show you. It's literally, hi, my, they have a field that says, it's embedded in the site. Hi, my name is, and I'd like to chat to you about this. Uh, best way to contact me is this. In other words, it's not name, address, email, inquiry. They've personalized it. And I think that's a really great, and it looks like, hi, my name is, I'd like to talk about da, and you can contact me on da. In other words, make it really easy and, and personable. And finally, put Google Maps. It's really easy to embed it in there and it makes it simple. Word of warning. And one thing that I think a couple of you I'd check out, uh, I'd really check out to make sure that every single phone number you have on your page is hyperlinked so it opens on an iPhone. The number of times I've been on someone's website and I jump in, I have a look at it, and I click on that number and it's not linked, which means I've got to copy it got to put it into my iPhone dial number and then I've got to dial it. That is just too many steps as opposed to click. Would you like to dial this number? Yes, away we go. So if you haven't done that, make sure you do. Elizabeth, coming back to yours, uh, a couple of questions. Let me do this. Any, do social proof again. What's the metric? Lovely. So social proof up here. If you have worked with any companies, big companies and they're, 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 they're you know, uh, household names, put their logos in there. If you're endorsed or you have qualifications, uh, put those in there with a logo. A logo is the important bit. If you've been on TV or you've been published in magazines, put that in there. If you don't have any of those things, think about a metric. You've helped 200 clients. Uh, you've been doing it for 20 years and just put, you know, uh, literally the infographic could look like, oh, let's jump in here. worse than when you started okay so you're gonna have elizabeth hi my name is elizabeth i love doing this with these kind of people uh da, 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 da. and then you have 100 clients uh, 20 years experience uh uh 9.2 nps score which is net promoter score in other words just choose three numbers and set them up so they're really easy to view uh, and that, that's good enough for having some sort of metric in there. Does that help? Hope so. Okay. Uh, what's another question we got in there? How does this work with a 15 minute chat? Good question. Your 15 minute chat, go back, behave yourself. Your 15 minute chat is, this is 
the 15 minute chat. So this goes to Calendly. Calendly books the time for the 15 minute chat. The 15 minute chat goes into your you know, plan scope session or your first appointment. But the thing you're selling here is the plan scope session. Does that make sense? So you're really selling the benefit of this, but the 15 minute chat is where you're going. Does that make sense? Team WealthMed? Hopefully so. Uh, yeah, Facebook, that's a really good point. Well, I again, I would test that, Carolyn. I would probably put... I, my, my gut feeling is that people will join it once they know you, but I would put it there. Join our Facebook group. Or if you don't have a downloadable, pop it, pop it there. I, my preference in terms of uh, importance, I'll, 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 I'll rate them. This is number one. Uh, this is number two and this is number three. But if you don't have, for example, if you, wanna, if you don't have a downloadable and you want to replace it with a Facebook group, put it here. If you don't, sorry, if you do have a downloadable, replace the event. If you do have an upcoming event that you people want to fill, again, replace the Facebook group with the event. But if you don't have a downloadable, then put that in there. Does that make sense? That's kind of the hierarchy. In other words, always replace the lowest number unless it's something you don't have or you've got a specific event coming up that you want to fill. Does that make sense? By the way, um, on your website as well, you might want to have pop-ups or specials. So if you've got a website, if you've got an event coming up, I would set up a pop-up that you know kicks up and said, hey, would you like to come to our event to supplement this? But again, don't forget, you've also got this band up here, which is equally for your download or event. Typically, I wouldn't use it for the 15 minute but I would use it for your thing that's coming up. Does that help? Hopefully so. If not, let me know. Okay. Why does it keep defaulting to that? Okay, let's keep going. Da, 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 da. My, not, my tech is really not helping itself today. Okay. Uh, the fourth piece is lead magnet. Uh, lead magnet, white paper, downloadable tool, whatever you want to call it. This is all covered in a module on the member site called Value Bomb. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, this is kind of an overview of various different lead magnets we've run over the past few years. You know, uh, of all of them that are probably most successful, I would say this one was the one that gets downloaded. We trot it out. We, every now and again, we rebrand it. We update it slightly. We put it out there. This was incredibly successful at the time. Not so much now. This is something we've kind of used a couple of times and we probably need to get on the front foot. Uh, this is our current one. This is one that I thought was going to be more successful, but didn't. And this is one that was highly successful, but didn't quite convert. Why am I sharing all of these? Because you can kind of see over the years, I'm, I've gotten into the habit of doing these often and doing these as quickly as I possibly can. I see a lot of people that'll spend months developing their, their white paper or their ebook. And I'm suggesting just get them out really, really quickly, put them up and test them. Uh, as I said, there is a whole module on it, which lives um, just here. It's under attract. If you're interested in this, I'm going to be doing a session later on today. Uh, and I'm actually, I'll talk a little bit about the end about what I'm planning on doing to, to help people out with the done for you. And as you see in the download section, there's a whole bunch of templates for this. There's examples and a whole bunch more. Uh, if you are interested in, in lead magnets, let me know. But ultimately what we're aiming to do with this is get people to visit your site, have a look around and go, oh, you know that I, I want that. And they give you their email address. And next thing you know, they're part of your mailing list. The final piece I want to touch on very quickly is analytics. I think mo some people said they hadn't, some people they didn't. But if you get your website up and running, get in there and make sure, get someone, get, we're happy to help, but get your Google Analytics uh, added in there. Because ultimately, if you've got a website and you don't know who's coming, you don't know where the traffic's coming from, you're kind of operating, what's going on here? You're operating with only half the information and that's kind of not where you want to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, the office has lost in connections. They may not be on. All right, no problem. Well, we got the recording. Wow, it's been really weird with the whole tech today. Um, look, there's a few other questions that we could potentially ask, and I'm happy to answer. You know, some people ask, how much should I pay for a website? Who can I get to build it for me? Uh, what about sign off? Which email marketing tool should I use? How do I update it on a regular basis? Which platform is the best one to use? What's SEO and why does it matter? How do I drive traffic to my website? Um, can I outsource the copy? How do I rank? How should I, should I brand it me or someone else? How many pages? What are keywords? How about team photos? What about images, other pages? How often? 
Uh, rather than answer them all, which are the questions that people would like to dive into? Uh, I'm very mindful of the fact that time's gone very quickly today. Uh, is there anything you're looking at and going, I would really like an answer for that particular question. And I'm happy to have it a dive in because um, I've given you the structure. I hope I've run you through a little bit of how I'd approach it. What other questions do people have about getting a website built? Jen, you asked a question earlier on about um, budget, uh, which is what are people's budgets? Let's do that. Let's, let's ask that question. What are people, if people were going to get someone else to build a website uh, and write the copy for them, what, what, is your, what has been your budget or what is your budget? I'd love to know. Pop it in the box. I'd love to get an understanding of what people see as what they should spend, what they have spent, while I answer that question, Carolyn. I, look, what platform is best? Which is this one here. What's going on? Okay, here we go. Whoops. Oh, I'm having one of those days. Bear with me, people. Let me just answer it. What platform is best? Uh, I think WordPress. Um, I, WordPress is, I think, last time I checked, 60 odd percent of the internet. Uh, it is by far the most popular um, uh, a website platform. And for me, I just think it's the easy way to go. Most people know how to do it. You can use other things like Liquid, you can get custom build, but WordPress is the easiest. You're going to get plugins. It's really easy to maintain. Yes, it's an old system, but it's kind of the easiest. Uh, Carolyn, yeah, use WordPress. I mean, WordPress is, is, is standard. You'll find it easiest. There's most people, easiest to find programmers. It's compatible with everything. If you're using an outsourced service, it's, you know, finding someone who can do Kajabi, which is ours, because we're a coaching car. Oh, God, good grief. Um, you know, let's just do that. Uh, it's a little bit harder. Uh, do you think Google reviews are important when people do a Google search for you? That's a great, great question, by the way. Um, the answer is, uh, I, yes, they are important, uh, but not as important for you as it would be for like a, a clothing company or a restaurant. But um, there's two areas I definitely make sure you have updated. And I think Jen would agree with this. Get your Google reviews updated with your correct address, your correct information, your correct website. Make sure it's accurate. And if there's reviews in there, make sure, particularly bad ones, make sure you jump in there and deal with them. But yeah, I think it's important because people are going to find you. They're going to find you up front when they type. Google's going to usually come up first. But um, in terms of just a pure repository for reviews, man, I would rather have people, clients giving me testimonials that I can put on my website or put on my, you know, for me, LinkedIn. Uh, it's secondary, but if there's some, people are putting them up there, yeah, it becomes important. Definitely the, having the information up to date is pretty important. Uh, Karen says she got it done in house, but no more than three to 5K. That's what she'd spend. Awesome. It's good to hear. How about other people? Who we got? Elizabeth, still with us, Jeffrey? Have you had a, how much did you spend when you got your website built? Yes, Daniel, it will be available on the members site, dude. Uh, any others? Jeffrey, still with us? Okay, I'm assuming there's no other questions in here. Uh, look, I think if I was building a website, obviously I'd look at it and go, uh, you did it yourself. Yeah, I mean, if you can, but again, let's be honest, the, the chances of you doing as good a job as someone who builds the technical side are sort of secondary. The, 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 the wording I think is important. Um, what about sign off? Again, yep, there's certain things you can and can't talk about. That's pretty key. Let's talk just very briefly about keywords and then we'll sort of, uh, sort of bring it home. Hopefully it's been useful. Um, keywords are really important. And I think when you're building a website, one of the worst things you can do is not recognize that some of the words, the SEO, the words that are in the background, the meta, whatever you want to call it, that, it, that describe your website, that's what Google's going to grab. Now, a lot of people put all their content just in the pages and they forget to update those meta, you know, the tags in the back. So before you go through and build your site, I would just go through this exercise. And again, I'm happy to uh, touch on a couple, yeah, work with a couple of you on it if you need be, which is I would brainstorm what are all the services that people are likely to search for which cover what you do, you know? You might go, it's financial advice. Uh, what else do we do? Uh, property purchase, a self-managed super fund. Whatever your thing is, just brainstorm it. What are all the problems that you help solve? Uh, not saving enough. Um, can't get a deposit, uh, not enough yield, whatever your thing is, just brainstorm it. What are the topics that you think people are likely to be searching for? Investing, uh, uh, doctors, surgery, 
in SMSF, whatever your thing might be. And finally, the solutions, cash flow management software, uh, ETAs, MDA, MDAs, self-managed accounts, whatever they are, I think go through and identify what your keywords are. And then when you come to build the site, you can hand it over to the person who's building it and they'll go, yeah, okay, I'll make sure those are in there in the background. Final thing, because I noticed sort of where we're at with time, I put this one in the, uh, in, the, in the worksheet as well. I call it the Magnificent Seven. Value prop is a really interesting area that a lot of people sort of, um, a lot of people often ask about, you know, what value prop is this and this and what value prop should I use for that? And there's a whole bunch of formulas. So I thought I'd include a few when you come to develop that headline piece that you can sort of draw upon. And we'll, put, we'll jump over here and we'll just dive into them. So again, uh, having that value proposition short and think is pretty key. And if you don't, oh, man uh let's jump in here here's sort of seven shortcuts man my pet hate is businesses that buy apps that are great and they then turn them into apps that are terrible which is exactly what's happened with paper okay so there's a few options crossing the chasms jeff moore he talks about the value proposition that just says for target customer who has this need our product or service is uh in a product category that gives you this benefit. So for example, you know, a couple of examples there, but in advice, it, it would be for those who want to enjoy life to the full and make their money work harder. The advice we provide on financial matters is makes what makes the possible probable. That follows that structure. Another one by, uh, from Made to Stick by Dan and Chip Heath talks about a proven industry example of a new domain. You know, the Uber of babysitting or the Tesla of financial services. That's kind of that space. So if that appeals to you, work on that as your headline. XYZ, Steve Blank, he talks about we help X do Y by doing Z. So it might be we help medical professionals create a future where work is a choice through advice that's specialized for their needs. Again, wordy, but I'm pretty sure you can knock that one down. Uh, Cooper and Vla Vlakovics, oh, never say that right, Cheat Guide to Customer Development. They talk about helping target customers solve problems with solutions. I think that's a beautiful, really nice, succinct one. We help growing families solve budgeting pain with discipline, free savings, and investing. Nice, succinct, to the point. Again, that's very, uh, an easy one to put together for your headline. Uh, Dave McClure's Pitch of Eve uh, BC presentation talks about short, simple, memorable, what, high, what, how, and why in three keywords, such as advicefirm.com is the fast track route to a life free of money worries. That follows that structure too. A um, couple more, Practicing Art of Pitchcraft. Uh, that was uh, Dave Cowan. He talks, about, he talks about outlining a huge problem in the world talk about what you sell up front or what your thing, a one sentence differentiator and then a credibility measure. So for example, 50% of non-home on Australians never will. We're the only financial advisors endorsed by Scott Pape who can fast track your path to home ownership. That again, follows that structure. And you can kind of see how it, while long, it's quite snappy. Iceberg Value Propositions by Eric Sick, uh, Silk talks about why choose this, uh, why you should choose what we do, what it is and, and who should choose it. So for example, uh, the most popular financial ma management system, uh, it's popular, it's a financial management system for 30 somethings. Uh, Elizabeth, that was Dave, there's two Daves, there's Dave Cowan and there's Dave McClure. It's all in the sheet, hopefully. Uh, and the final one is Describing Startups by Gar Kawasaki. He talks about this interestingly. He talks about a verb plus an application and a differentiator. So get paid for going on holiday with your kids or buy the right insurance, 100% custom built for you. So the verb is buy. The right insurance is the application and the differentiator is custom built. So again, if you're working, perfect. Working, if you're working on um, your headline, which is usually the bit you want to get right, I want to put those ones in there as the kind of shortcut. Right, I'm well over time. Hopefully it's been useful. Just do me a favor. If it's been useful, let me know. What's the one thing that you've taken from this particular session which you think you could potentially put into action or, or sort of implement. Just let me know, what's the one thing that you think you could put into play? Apologies for the overrun, guys. I don't know where the time's gone today. What's the one thing, the whole thing, the outline and how to get a sensible structure. Structure's everything, um, whether it's, where well, you know me, if it's blogs or it's, uh, you know, processes, the structure, get the structure first and, and it's cool. We need to revamp our first page, says Jeffrey. Could do, I mean, this is, this is a great thing to get together and work on the copy before you do the page. And Jeffrey, to be honest, I, I think you should get someone to, to build a page for you. Do the copy and get them to build a page. Um, Elizabeth, let me know what you have found useful, if anything.
don't want to be presumptive. Um, guys, I want to share something with you because uh, Jen and I have been talking for a while about this. And I, I guess recently I've had the experience. Thank you. Clear overview says Elizabeth. Clear, uh, yeah, love it. So Jen and I have been talking a lot about websites. And I had the experience recently of talking to a couple of businesses who'd gone and spent quite a significant amount of money to work with copywriters outside of the industry. People who maybe had missed a couple of things we've spoken about, particularly the integration, you know, the, the, the lead magnets and whatnot. But also, they'd had websites built that for me, I just looked at them and God, they, they, they feel and they look ugly. There's nobody in this room who, who thankfully, but a couple of people. And then when they told me what they'd spent on, I was like, wow. For a while now, I've been, I've been toying around with the idea of going out and, and identifying maybe uh, three to five businesses who came to me and said, Stu, we, like, we need a website. And then working with somebody, a, a, a web designer or a company who can build it, technically I trust them. Coming up with someone who can have a template similar to this, maybe three different versions where people can choose and then update their font. And then sitting down those businesses, doing a session where we, we worked together on this stuff. We created the wording and ultimately what I was doing is I was taking it and then copying, copywriting it, uh, doing, doing the copy myself. Uh, on top of it, things like building a, a lead magnet for them uh, or one of three and then putting it up there, but then going in the background and essentially working with you to get the, the value proposition, writing the copy myself, giving the sign off and, and then setting up some of the key things we've spoken about. And then also working, I, I go and brief uh, the, uh, the technical guys who then build it. And I wanted to put it out there. Is this something that you think is needed? Is it something you think we should do? Is it something that you think... Uh, I, sh I should sort of, uh, I guess, invest some time to do. What are your thoughts on this? And look, if you want to sort of tell me verbally, that would be really interesting too. It's one of those ideas that's been floating around. I can't work out whether, you know, if I put it out there, people will go, yes, I'd like you to, to build my website and write the copy and set that up for me and, and, and manage that or whether I'm sort of just, it would be distracting. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? We would be keen to use... Uh, a facilitator session and integrate it into our site. In other words, work on a session on this, identify the pieces that are missing, and then you go away and implement what you've already got or work on the bits and pieces, design the copy, and then we get a tech person to come and ha basically edit your site to suit. Is that what you're saying, Carolyn? The, for the first or the second? Jeffrey, what do you think? Uh, yeah, okay, so the first, that makes sense. So in other words, do the session to work on the copy, do, maybe revise some of the copy and you guys do the tech. Elizabeth, what are your thoughts on this? Jeffrey, is that something that opens the idea definitely worth exploring? Okay, cool. So he's interested in it, love it. We need to, uh, what does Elizabeth say? Uh, okay, that's good to know. Well, look, um, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna sort of put together a high level of what I think it would look like in terms of the, the deliverables, the time frames, the cost. I'll shoot it through to you uh, and you can let me know. I'll put it through to everybody. As I said, at the moment, I, I'd probably only be doing this with maybe three, maybe four, maybe five businesses. But if, if it's something else you're interested in, particularly having looked at this stuff and you'd like to you know, explore it more, then I'd love to do that. Other than that, apologies for the speed at which the webinar has gone today. I am going to be on the drop in a bit later today. If there's anything you'd like to jump in with me and if you want to work on some of your wording, if Jeffrey, you said you need to redo your first page. If you want to, come in and do some work on it this afternoon. Uh, similarly, uh, Carolyn, if you wanted to, you know, either book a sesh or, or work on it and go, okay, these are the areas that you want to work on, that we can do that too. But other than that, unless everybody's got any, anyone's got any questions, I hope you've enjoyed the webinar today. Uh, I've been wanting to do it for a while. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. If anyone's got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, final question. What have people got planned for the weekend? Carolyn, what do you got on? Uh, Jeffrey, what do you got on, man? I'll tell you what I got on. I've got uh, last weekend I had the kids. This weekend uh, I'm taking Rachel out for a lovely meal. I'm taking the Stinking Bishops in Newtown, which is a cheese and whiskey restaurant. I'm going to Newstead tomorrow to chill out. Ooh, I'm jealous. Man, I want to get up to the Sunshine Coast more often. I had a friend of mine who told me we should buy property in the Gold Coast. What do you think about that? I don't know. Mm, we'll wait and see. Cool. Jeffrey, hopefully you have a good weekend. Hey, uh, let's leave it there. <sighs> Do you know what, Carolyn? I think I told you about this. Well, you remember we did that, that uh, I don't know if you were at the session we did in Corumban? 
I was seriously thinking about moving up to Corumban. And and because going from Coolangatta to all over the country, it's uh it's cheap as chips. But uh yeah, didn't didn't quite come off. And I think school has now become a thing. So well, school's become a thing, of course it has. All right, uh, guys and girls, um, if I'm not catching up with you next week, probably should. Carolyn, I think we're touching base. If not, oh, by the way, Carolyn, spoke to Peter. We're talking today on the phone. So uh, we'll chat more about how to integrate that little piece. It's sounding really good. Jeffrey, bottle of wine to drink with my wife tonight. A long reef as the sun sets you, Lothario, you. Love it. Well, one man, one woman, Lothario. Uh, one web square, Squarespace version. Interesting. Okay. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's, I, don't, I think that's pretty doable. Jen, can you note that one down? All right, let's leave it there. I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's check in next week and make sure everything's on track. Uh, Jeffrey, I know we are. Uh, Carolyn, I definitely want to progress things. Anybody else who's watching this, I'll speak to you later. Have a great weekend. See you later. Bye.